So we are going to talk about page 368, number 20. It's a limiting reactant re equation, and we're trying to, to figure out exactly what the limiting reactant is. Basically, um, we have our equation. We're given 100 grams of sodium and 100 grams of iron 2 oxide. And we have to figure out the limiting reactant. So, the limiting reactant. This is an absolute, very, 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 very important skill that you need to have. You need to be able to do this. Now, here's what you do. Or at least this is what I do. I like it. It works 100% of the time. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go mass to moles. And we can even say this, given mass to moles. So I'm going to say for sodium, I'm going to, we're going to start with 100 grams of sodium. Now, what is the molar mass of sodium? 22.99. So I got 22.99 grams per one mole. Now I have the 100 and I have the um, the 22.99 in the bottom there. So how am I going to actually use those numbers? What what do I have to do? Divide. So divide those two numbers and you get 4.3, and I'm just going to round the two decimal places, so our answer is not going to be, if you checked out in the book, the answer is not going to be 100% the same as the book, but that's okay. Moles of sodium in that case. Now, I'm also going to do this for iron to oxide. I got 100 grams of iron 2 oxide, Fe2O3. Now, this is my third hour doing this. You have to do two times, because we have to figure out molar mass. So two times iron, that's two times 55.85, 55.85, plus three times oxygen, which is 16. So you get 2 times 55.85 plus 3 times 16. You get 159, 159.70 one grams per one mole. Now what am I going to have to do? Divide. divide. So we're going to divide those guys. 100 divided by 159.70. And I get 0.626 moles of Fe2O3. Alright, now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up, now, that's part one. Part two is to compare mole ratios. And in order to figure out the limiting reactant, we have to compare mole ratios. So I'm going to take the given mole ratios, or the, there's only one of them, so, oops, sorry, it's mole ratio, and I'm going to just take it as it is, sodium on top of uh, iron 2 oxide. So I'm going to say 4.35 moles of Na over... 0.626 moles of Fe2O3. Now, that those numbers pretty much stink as far as being able to compare them to anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to divide by 0.626, divide this by 0.626, Oh. 
Go bleed. All right. And the only reason why I'm doing this, ladies and gentlemen, why I'm dividing both sides by 0.626 is one is I'm going to get one in the bottom. And it's going to help me actually compare everything. So take the 4.35 divided by 0.626, and I get 6.9488. And that divided by that is just going to give me one mole of Fe2O3. And so that's, that's the mole of sodium. Now, I want to compare it to the equation. The equation says six moles of Na should react with one mole of Fe2O3. Now we look at this. We got one mole and one mole. Now one mole reacts with six. Do I have enough to react with the one mole? Yeah, yeah I do. Do I have more than enough or less than enough? More than enough. Which is going to run out first, though? Yeah, that guy's going to run out. I'm going to run out of that because... After I get to six moles of this, I'm done with the one mole of this. So you're going to run out of Fe2O3 first, which means Fe2O3 is the limiting reactant. That's your limiting reactant. So now I go back up to here and I take a look and this guy is going to become super important because that's how much I'm going to have. That, this guy right here, the 0.626 moles. Now, so if Fe2O3 is the limiting reactant, what's the, what's the one that has the excess amount? Alright, so sodium is in excess. So this actually answers A and B. This is part A, this is part B, as far as the answers go. I know sodium is in excess, and I know that my limiting reactant has to be the iron 2 oxide. And that's because once I run out of one of these, I should run out of six of these, but I have more... I have more um, sodium left over, so but that sodium's not going to react with anything because there's no more iron, or iron two oxide to react with it. Now it says, uh, what's the mass of iron? All right, so so part C says I need the mass of iron, and this has to be based on that 100 grams of Fe2O3 because that's my limiting reactant. That's my limiting reactant. I can't use the 100 grams of... I cannot use the limiting... I cannot use the... Uh, the sodium because I don't use all the sodium, but I know that I'm going to use all 100 grams of the iron. So I'm going to set it up. 100 grams of Fe2O3. And now I'm going to use, I'm going to go mass to moles. So I need molar mass here. We figured out what molar mass was. We already did that. 59.70. So 159.70. I know that's not what I said, but Fe2O3 in one mole of Fe2O3. Now, 
I'm going to have to go from moles to moles. So I'm going to have to go from moles of Fe2O3 to moles of iron. So I look at the equation. How many moles of Fe2O3 are there? What's the coefficient? One. So one mole of Fe2O3. Now what's the coefficient on iron? Two. two. So two moles of Fe. Now I have to go moles to mass. And the nice thing is we could just keep going. So I know one mole of Fe is going to give me a certain amount of mass of Fe. Go back to the periodic table if I've already forgotten, since I've already forgotten. 55.85 grams of Fe. And this is, even though we, we did the whole magic number thing when we were doing some stoichiometry problems, this is why unit analysis is so awesome. Because I could go from grams and divide out grams and I'm left with moles of Fe. But then I could say, you know what? I don't want moles of Fe. I can, I can stop the calculation right here and figure out how many moles of Fe that I have. But I can continue the, the uh, calculation on, divide out the moles of Fe, and now if I just go this far, I'm going to figure out the moles of iron. If I go one more step, I can actually figure out the grams of iron. So depending on what you want to know, you could divide out what you need to divide out. All the units that we don't want divide out, and I'm left with grams of Fe. So now my question becomes, all right, I got 100 here. What am I going to do with the 159.70? Divide, 159.70. Now what am I going to do with that 2? Multiply by that 2. What am I going to do with that 55.85? Multiply by 55.85, and I'm going to have a total of 69.94 grams of Fe is going to be produced. So now I was able to actually figure out how much iron is going to be produced. Now, does that make sense how we got that and used the... Um, Use unit analysis to get from grams. I want grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams. That's why it's so important to understand this because this is an extremely, I'll be 100% I'll, I'll be honest. Once you get the hang of it, it's an extremely simple way of getting from 100 grams to 69.94 grams. Because it ends up just being multiplying and dividing. I keep on telling people, just give yourself to the process. Submit to the process. It'll make your lives so much easier. And it's been working, oh, for hundreds of years. So you know what? Those guys are pretty smart. Maybe, maybe they were on to something somewhere. All right. Now, the last part, D. How much sodium is in excess. So how much sodium is in excess? Now, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use the 69.94 grams of Fe, and I want to go back to, convert, to actually calculate how much um, sodium was used. So basically I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to say 69.94 grams of Fe. And now I'm going to work backwards. And up here it said 55.85 grams in one mole. So I'm going to put 55.85 grams of iron in one mole of iron. Now I have to go back to the equation because now I want to I actually convert this back to sodium. 
So basically what I want to do is I want to go from Fe to sodium. So I want to go from that product to the reactant. How much of that sodium reactant am I using to make that 69.94 grams of sodium or uh, of iron? So we go back up to the top to the equation. How many grams of iron are there? Or how many moles, rather? Two moles. How many moles of sodium? Six. So I can say down here, two moles of iron is going to, I need six moles of sodium. And I need grams. So I'm going to say that one mole of sodium is going to give me, looking at the periodic table, 22.9 or grams of sodium. And so for the amount that was actually produced, which was 69.94 grams, that was actually produced. I'm going to get an answer here, which is ac the amount that's actually used. And that's what we want to do from that. Now, do the math, dump it into a calculator. Thankfully, we don't have to do this by hand like I had to do when I was a kid. Uh, what am I going to do with the 69.94 and the 55.85? Divide, divide them. So 69.94 divided by 55.85. All right, I got my answer. Now, what am I going to do with the 6? Multiply by the 6. What am I going to do with the 2? Divide by the 2. What am I going to do with the 22.9 or 9 or? Divide, multiply. multiply. So 22.99. I'm actually using 86.37 grams of sodium. That's not our answer. Here's our answer. How much did we have? How much did we actually have? Look at the original problem. How much sodium was that? Where I get was I given? One hundred grams. So I ha actually had one hundred point zero zero grams of Na. How much did I use? Eighty-six point three seven. So I got eighty-six point three seven grams of sodium. Now, what am I going to do in order to figure out how much is actually extra? Yeah, 100%. Subtract it. 100 minus that answer is 13.63 grams of sodium in excess. Or left over. Now, yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into this, but like I've said, you're not in, uh, you're in big boy and big girl science now. It's, there are a lot of calculations that are going to go on. Now, if you take a look at the calculations, they're not that hard. It's all add, it's all multiplying, it's all dividing, and even a little bit of subtraction. The process is not that difficult, but what you need to do is you need to actually understand the process in depth. And that's the biggest key to this whole thing is understanding what the process is. So hopefully this kind of goes and shows you step by step what you need to do. First thing you need to do, convert to moles. Convert to moles. Then compare mole ratios. And by comparing mole ratios, you get weird, crazy numbers but if you divide by that 0.626, you end up with something that's a little bit nicer to use because you get one mole there. And then I can compare it to the actual mole ratio, which happens to be 1 to 6. After I figure out what's my limiting, what's my excess, I use my limiting to figure out everything else. And I, I use the limiting to figure out how much of the product actually was made. And then 
in order to figure out how much excess I actually have, I use the actual amount of product that was actually made, and that's going to tell me how much was actually used. And once, there, once I figure out how much was actually used, all I have to do is subtract them, and I got my answer. Lots of fun on that one.